Hello, and welcome back to the Divine Witch Podcast. I'm your host, Debbie, along with my co-host, Jason. Hello. And today, you know, we're just going to do what we do every Friday, and that's slowly take over the world. I mean, do this podcast. I didn't say take over the world. We would do that. Little not me. By little. <laughs> Pinky and the brain. I fucking miss that part, too. Oh, it was the cutest little thing ever about world domination. Maybe that's my issue of wanting control is that I watched too much pinky in the brain and I found my pinky right and you found your brain <laughs> anyway that's beside the point a little bit of 90s nostalgia to bring you into our podcast this evening of course you know we're a little bit late with the upload on this podcast but there's been a lot of things going on over here behind the scenes of the divine witch aka me and my life and my craziness I've been getting ready for this weekend's event, which is uh, Ohio Valley Pagan Picnic happening tomorrow. Going from noon to eight, rain or shine, it's going to be happening. And one of the cool things that they're doing this year is that they're taking food donations of non-perishable items. Because if you didn't know, you're about to know that Ohio Valley Pagan Society is one of the many groups and shops that work together to gather food for Dagda's Cauldron, which is distributed to Shared Harvest. Yeah, we were one of the founders of that. Um, As a few years ago, there was some issues and we seen a need and we decided to throw our hats into the cauldron, so to speak. And it has grown into its own thing. Um, Actually, there's a few shops I'm gonna be talking about that has cauldrons that you can donate uh, throughout the whole year and they do some really cool stuff and you know we love supporting our community whether it's the pagan community or just the community at large so yeah i'm pretty stoked pretty excited now i'm going to be there tomorrow not as the divine witch but as the owner of crystal turtle collections Yay. so if you want to stop by the booth and buy some merch from your favorite local pagan priestess please do stop by i do got some specials running and i do got a little bit of head for everybody well at least skull heads that is we've got resin crystal art and uh we've got some of our soap skulls so even when you're not getting head you can still get a little head while buying it from me anyway side the point let's move on to our next event Ah, it's been, it's a great segue. Really you just is. need a little bit of head to get ahead. Come get it from me. That sounds so wrong in so many ways. And I just <laughs> realized how bad it sounds. <laughs> but, you know, that's part of the fun of uh, shameless self-promotion. Speaking of <laughs> shameless self-promotion, we've got Hedge Meadow. Never heard of the group before, but apparently they're out there in the Ohio valley area or in the ohio area just in general columbus to be a fact um if my memory does serve me right august the 11th at uh week that music was brought to you by somebody in my hood (laughs) it's your story (laughs) don't know who the artist was nor do i claim to have the music rights of whoever came by and brought us that little music intro for this event. Um, it's at Wheatstone Park of Roses. They are doing a full moon ritual August the 11th at 6 p.m. Never heard of them. Can't vouch for what the event's going to be like, but it is a full moon ritual. So if you're up in the Columbus area and you want something to do and you want to gather with other pagans just like you, go check it out. Tell me if it was worth it or not. The next thing that we have happening August 11th, because August 11th is a full moon type of night, so all the witches are going to come out and have their little events. We've got a Millican Woods meetup brought to you by Butler County Pagan Gatherings, where anything can happen. Anything. Anything. Well, I mean, Randy does run the group, or one of the main leaders of that group, and if you haven't met Randy, Randy's a character. He's fun. He's spooky. He's ooky. He could have been the missing Adams family member that we all know and love. Right. Or he could be Rob Zombie's half-brother. You never know. 
He's kind of a mixture in between. Don't even looks like his right? brother. If you start, if you start <laughs> thinking about it, see, we like to poke fun at our fellow leaders out there, mm -hmm. but they know that we love them, and they get a little chuckle when they listen. And if they haven't listened, well, <laughs> keep on doing what you're doing. Just ignore us over here at the Divine Joy, don't you? <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, let's move on ahead into the future. August twentieth. There is an event happening, um, I believe it is at the, it's at a place. It's at one place. It's at a place. I can't remember the name of it because it slipped my mind. Don't you hate that? Like when you have the name of something on your mind and it's just like, it just slips away like some 70s montage and you just kind of drone on because that's what I do here. When I can't remember something and it's at the tip of my brain going, <laughs> you ain't going to get it. I just mumble on and make some really cool statements until it finally comes. It's the Hilton. That's what it is. The see? Hilton Hotel. See, you just got to keep that train going and just keep on moving. So speaking of keeping the train moving, it is at the Hilton Inn, which is around the Cincinnati, Kentucky area. I'll have the link below so you can actually get the real details of the location. But it is an event that I'm also going to be at. And it is going to be full of witchy tidings from crystals to readers and everything in between. You never know what you're going to get at Sacred Market. And I obviously don't know either, but I'm a vendor there because it fell into my lap. And that's where Hecate brought me. Sometimes the crossroads gives and sometimes the crossroads take away. And it was one of those times where the crossroads gave. So this event is August 20th. It does start at 10 a.m. goes to 6 p.m. And then that Sunday, it continues on August 21st and goes from 12 to 5 p.m. Now, just so you know that this uh, event does have a ticket price, but it has a good reason for it as well. It's only $7 a day or $10 for the week, and I mean, that's cheaper than taking two people out to go out to eat, right? Sure, sure Not cheaper is. than gas, but... Yeah. Eh, a little bit cheaper than gas. I mean, you could probably get a gallon, what, a gallon and a half if you're lucky. Yeah. Two gallons if you know where you're going. Anyway, kids under 12 get in free. And also a portion of the cells are donated to Helping Women. And it is Women Helping Women. It is a wonderful group that helps victims of domestic violence. So I didn't know that until today. But when I found out, I was super freaking excited. Because I love supporting things that helps people in our community, whether it be helping the children or helping people, you know, get into a better situation and getting away from things that aren't good for their physical, mental health. So if you want to come out, even if crystals ain't your thing and you want to support an organization that does help, check out Women Helping Women. Um, I believe it would probably be around the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Kentucky area. Um, since they are collaborating together. I haven't actually looked into the organization, but I think everything that needs to be told has already been told. Awesome. Right? Yeah. It's kind of weird how like these have progressed to where we get the events and like as I go through these events, I kind of feel like I'm doing radio. Yeah, right. A little bit, <laughs> even though it's not radio. So like if this just seems droned on, please. Don't say it like that. It's just me trying to get used to it, get into the vibrations of the podcast. And eventually we will start actually have whole one conversations on our podcast along with it. So our podcast longevity time um, is going to be extending. Probably it could be anywhere from an hour or more. Once we start getting into those deep discussions, bringing on other people, which I'm going to do between the fall and the winter, you know, just to try to keep things, uh, interesting sorry my dogs keep on trying to do the shady stuff and i keep on throwing the same thing at them which is my sunglasses and my husband keeps on looking at me like stop throwing the sunglasses i'm like it's it's the easier way it, it's not going to hurt them but it's going to get the point across and i don't have to stop this podcast to yell at my dogs because they're like children but they're my children and i love them so much they eat me out of the house and home like my other children but they, they, they're snuggly and furry, so it makes, it's, it's okay. So with speaking of things that are furry and cuddly, do you know the woods has a lot of these kind of creatures? That's why we love doing Witch in the Woods. Now, I don't recommend touching some of the wildlife you may see because you may end up with a gift that keeps on giving 
like our little skunk friends like to give. Yes. Or, you know, yeah. maybe a beaver will drop a tree on you. I wonder if that's ever happened. A beaver know. randomly is chewing on a tree and then pop, hit somebody. You know, it's got to happen to at least one person once. And they've really got to think about their life choices. Like, what did they do to where they were there at the moment that the beaver decided to chop the tree and they were underneath the tree? See, this is how my mind works, kids. But here's the information on Witch in the Woods, which is a divine witch event. August 27th, starting at 12 p.m. This is a one-day event, and it continues throughout the night. And then we kick everybody out on Sunday, which is at 11 a.m. So it starts August 28th and go, or August 27th and goes to August 28th. Please don't show up any earlier than 12 p.m. because we need to get that magic going, get everybody situated and set up. So from 12 p.m. on, we'll be getting the people who's reserved a spot for camping. Currently, we're fully booked when it comes to camping spots. But we do welcome people to come throughout the day. And as a friendly reminder, make sure to bring cash because we're going to be in the woods. So it's not guaranteed that we're going to be able to swipe them credit cards if you plan to buy something from any of our lovely vendors that we have ever met. I forgot about that. That's, that's a, yeah, that's true, ain't yeah, it? It sure is. Money speaks and bullshit walks, and when you're in the woods, sometimes you just need to hold them coins and toss it at your witchers. Yeah. By the way, my uh, business partner, who hasn't ever been to one of our Divine Witch events, is going to be <laughs> there. So you really should buy from Crystal Turtle Collections and uh, get her spun into chaos. <laughs> and say witchy quims to her and ask her what house she belongs to when it comes to Harry Potter. <laughs> Throw a little bit of a curveball at her. Ask her questions to Laura. Because she's more of what I consider my muggle of the group. Yeah. One of the business partners. And uh, I'll be doing stuff. I might even hide in my tent because I got a nice queen size. Uh, Very comfortable. Very comfortable air mattress. And we just tested it out. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to sleep so good. That's one thing about camping in the woods. The luxury of having a bed when, you know, you got a bad back isn't really necessarily happens. So you got to find the best thing. And over the years, we've tried our hand at different air mattresses and different methods. And the one that we just got landed on a perfect spot. So I'm super excited about that. And I wanted to share it with you all. It's not something that you really needed to know, but you know, little things. That being said, we're going to jump into September. It's September 31st. We are going to have a double feature at Rue's Realm for the Hocus Pocus release. Now, Hocus Pocus came out about almost, what, like 27 years ago, and they are finally releasing a part two. Now, after all that time. I know, it just took for freaking ever. It's a cult classic, and yet, you know, Disney doesn't do anything on their time. They do it, or anybody else's time, they do it on their time. Sometimes the mouse says behind the curve, and Finally, people are getting what they want. With that being said, there is going to be food and drinks provided at this event. And there is a $5 entry fee that is going to help us get our Yule event off and started. Because come hell or high water, I plan to have a Yule event this year. So help us out. Come visit. Get some good snacks. I've been looking on Pinterest of different things to do. I think I'm going to do some the book brownies. We're definitely going to have popcorn because you can't have a movie without popcorn. And we're going to do some other fun things as well. So keep an eye out. Go check out the page. And since we're speaking of you all, I just want to give a thank you to Rue's Realm, Ragnar's Riches, Runestone Heathens, and of course my business, Crystal Turtle Collections, who have all decided that they are going to donate in for the Yule event so that way we can have it this year now if you're looking for ways to support us and to get this Yule event off the ground you can go ahead and pre-order a Witch in the Woods t-shirt you can go ahead and join this event on September or you can just do our Patreon you can donate a little bit every month and a little bit goes a long way Sure. And it helps with different events that we do, like Witch in the Woods, and allows us to keep most of our events free. Actually, the one that we're doing at Rue's Realm, I think, is one of the first, if the only, events that we've ever charged for people to go to. Because we try to keep everything free for everyone. And 
you know, we really want to do something spectacular this year for you all. So help us out a little bit if you would. If you can, if you can't, it's all right. If we can't do it this year, there's always next year, and then we can definitely make it worth the while. So with that being said, we do got a few things coming up when it comes to this podcast. Now, like I told you guys, uh, we're going to start doing different interviews. We're going to be talking about certain topics. And um, currently, I am still looking for people to join us in September for the conversation about tarot reading, the whole debate of, you know, getting paid or versus not getting paid how to find your cards, different methods of reading, and things like that. So if you're a reader and you'd like to join me for this conversation in September, we currently haven't situated a day yet, but you can reach out to me at the email down below. I am looking for about three or four people, probably three, because me being a reader myself, that would be the fourth one, and keeps it a small, steady group, less of a chance of things getting chaotic, especially when you're doing it over Zoom. So, yeah, I'm looking for three other people. And if you're interested, just give me an email. So, speaking of things that are interesting as well, um, August 14th, I'm actually getting together with Heidi and Roger of Runestone Edens. And we are going to be talking about the ritual that they will be doing as our opening ritual for Witch in the Woods. So, we're going to deep dive into a little bit about their group, a little bit about heathenism. And a little bit about what you should expect at this year's Witch in the Woods opening ritual. So I'm pretty excited about that. I know Heidi is doing some amazing things within the community uh, with local heathen pagans. So is Roger as well. And, you know, hopefully, you know, I can introduce you guys to them and we can start having these discussions and they can become part of our regulars here on the Divine Witch Podcast. And you guys can learn some cool things and uh we'll also provide the information in case you ever want to reach out to them um they're both lovely people and they both like to share you know the resources and education speaking of sharing resources you know what i love more than knowledge is getting a good deal good deal damn right i love having a good deal there's something about like when you get a deal that it just raises your energy in a different vibration. It sets them endorphins to go skyrocketing because <laughs> you're like, you know what? I got this and I know it's normal price, but now I got it for this. And that makes you happy when you can buy things for yourself and you don't have to sit there and think, oh, what about bills? Well, if you get it at a discounted price and it's in your budget, I mean, how can you disagree with that? True. So <laughs> with that being said, Ruse Realm is offering a 10% discount on any orders over $25. All you got to do is just mention us, say that the Divine Witch Podcast sent you that way, and you will get 10% off your orders over $25. And I mean, that's a steal deal because a lot of the things that they got in there are fairly reasonable in their price. They really are. And they support locally crafted crafters, crafted crafters. Like they're selling people. They don't sell people, but they sell the items people make. So, you know, that's a good thing. Also, (laughs) I know, trying to keep it in schedule. We also got Posh Pagan Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Hamilton, Ohio. Actually, to be exact where they're at, it is 1232 Main Street, Hamilton, Ohio. Um, They are doing 10% off of most of their merch. So if you're into witchy... 90s style kind of hot topic occult merchandise this is the place for you i haven't personally been able to go in there yet because you know i do a lot of things and i've got to use my time wisely and most of the time when i'm free i'm recuperating from things that i've done so go show them some love tell them that the divine witch sent you and tell them we'd love to support them one day whenever we get the fucking chance so I'm just putting that out there. Love that. Let them know our name. Tell them we sent you. And they'll be like, oh my God, who's that? No, they know us. Right. But I know I, th- I throw things. And then there's Gizzy Wizzy being all cutesy wootsy. But with that being said, I want to talk about anger today on today's podcast. <gasps> wow. Well, that was a perfect segue, I guess. Release the anger. So I've been thinking about this for a couple of days because like when it comes to patience and it comes to dealing with other people's bullshit, I am notoriously known for not handling it well. And that's my own personal diagnosis. 
Not that I've been told that, even though I think I probably have once or twice. But it's one of those things where, like, you try to work on it, and then you think you get to a certain point, and you're, you realize only to have that one fuck around and find out asshole that makes you go, you know what, fuck spirituality. You've, you've hit the fuck around to find out button. <laughs> and then you start going into your old ways, and then afterwards you're like, man, I'm fucking depressed in my spiritual practice. And it always seems like this vicious cycle, you know what I mean? Like, when it comes to growth, whether it be with anger or sadness or grief or whatever the fuck you're dealing with, and you're trying to take a spiritual approach to it, it always seems like there's this, you know, you're supposed to ground yourself, use your crystals, take a deep breath. And it's like, bitch, not everybody's going to think that when you want to punch somebody in the fucking face. Let's be realistic here. We're talking one-on-one. -on -one. You ain't going to sit there and be like, mm, deep breaths while you hear somebody fucking just run in their mouth. No. You're going to be like, mm, lights out, motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> realist, oh. like, oh, I'm going to take my raw crystal and fucking give you some good vibrations. You're going to have some dents on that forehead when I'm done. <laughs> Oh, I mean, realistically, <laughs> let's, let's be real here. I'm, I'd rather be real with my audience and sit there and be like, oh, like, oh my God, guys, just take a deep breath. Imagine the energy coming from the earth inside of you, which is another thing I think is fucking hilarious when it comes into the terms of like grounding yourself and getting rid of any negative energy like you do realize inside of the earth is a melted lava crust that is made of fire okay you're bringing fire energy into it yeah so like depending on how deep you ground yourself you're just going to end up in the same cycle of fucking pissed off that's right but fueled like some fucking super saiyan shit mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 right like nobody really thinks about that though you know what i mean they think about the earth they think about the ground the soil beneath your feet the growth but like have you ever been to a haunted forest have you ever been to a haunted location can you ground yourself in those locations or when you go to get that energy do you get the fuck around and find out energy spooky edition spooky no one edition. ever talks about that <laughs> Like, think about it. Spooky edition. <laughs> <laughs> like, think about it. Like, seriously. If you've been on a land where mass murders, like a shit ton of which has been recorded and not lost, that has happened, and you go to ground yourself, right? And you get in that energy from that land because land spirits and land energy and elementals and portals, if you want to get into that, and ley lines are a fucking thing. They are. So, like... If you're in the wrong spot getting the wrong energy you could be inviting some shit into you that you're not even thinking about <laughs> see this is how my tangents of my brain process of thought go like it started with anger and now we're into yeah bitch ground yourself in a haunted location let's see what happens <laughs> i dare you <laughs> i double dog dare you won't do it <laughs> i mean come on these are the conversations we really want to have like, could you imagine getting the wrong energy or you take energy back? Like, I get it. Like, there's a whole system of energy work. And depending on what you practice and what you believe, depends on, you know. But you never read about that in books. They never talk about that. They just talk about the healing energy and the light vibration. Like, what about cleansing with dark energy? It's possible. Cleansing with neutral energy. Still fucking possible. Nobody talks about it. Yep. How come? Why is it always light? Do you know that light needs that darkness? And if we think about obsidian, obsidian itself, we like it, it's melt, melted lava and earth together, which is fire and earth, right? And I think that's how it's made. It's like a glass crystal-ish thing. If I'm wrong, correct me. But when I think of black, it's protective. Like that cloak, like black cloaks, protective cloak, cloak of night, cloak of darkness. So there's protection in the darkness as there is the light. But most people focus on the protection of light 
than they do the darkness. Yeah. And then if you get to the yin and the yang, which I know the yin and the yang concepts is, you know, dealing with your light self and your dark self. But if we bring it into an energy type of format to where you have to have protection, both of the light and of the dark. It's fear. <coughs> well, I mean, yeah. That's why you got your spooky light. Or your gizzy of doom. So I didn't do it. She's up to you. I love her. But like I was saying, back to my original thought, is I was thinking of anger, and like I said, the process that you always hear, meditation, crystals, cleansing, spiritual baths, but like, you've also got to take the psychological with it, of like, okay, this is good to do, but how do you train your brain to not only do these things, but to acknowledge those emotions in that minute? And I think that's one of the issues. Like, I was thinking about this. I want to think of my emotions kind of like a pencil, right? You got your five points. So you got anger, sadness, happiness, remorse, and, you know, your middle one kind of just being the whole and how you deal with it, right? So you got all these emotions coming in. And if you block one of your emotions or completely cut it off, like, oh, I can't have that then, you know, the experiences that you learn from that, you are blocking yourself from. Because if you think of anger in the way of, like, when you get, when I get angry, you know, there's stages. Some say there's five stages, some say there's 21. Um, but the one that I like to go as is, like, the first stage is calmness. Second stage is, like, irritation. The th first one, the third one is aggravation. Then it's mad or pissed off and then mad, basically, right? So it's like these five stages that you have and how to go from pissed off to, <coughs> excuse me, not so pissed off and oh. try you know, to calm it down. Like I, when I was doing meditation, don't get me wrong, it did help because there was periods where I'd get so mad, it would throw me down into calm. And I feel like when I was in that state of like, I still should be pissed. Why am I calm? It's like, I got to a point of being so angry. It threw me down into the calm stage, which is a weird feeling. If you ever have it happen and you're like, right. what the fuck just happened? <clears throat> and like, that's, that one is a hard one to explain to people. Like, how do you go from this to this? Like, I, I don't know. It just happens. Right. But it's, acknowledgement of that emotion what is making you feel that way why are you triggered by that what is it that this person said or did did it physically harm you as to why you're mad or was it an emotional harm and separating the two and then trying to figure it out and like it's hard to do in the moment but like people have regrets right and they sit there and they think over years of things that they either did to other people or you know they set out of anger and it's because they didn't fully get to process why that happened to them and by that point, you know, that realization could take five, 10 years and that person hasn't seen you and you can't make amends because they're not letting you make amends. Right. <coughs> <coughs> so I made a post on my Instagram about it, just kind of like my whole thought process on it, like don't shut down the emotion of anger, but more the acknowledgement of it and to be self-aware. Like the mindfulness practice I've been using a little bit more in the last couple of weeks, well, a couple of months, actually, where you sit there and you think of something and you got to be honest when you're with yourself when you do this and you think about what it is, whether it's sadness, whatever, and be like, why am I feeling this way? How am I feeling at this moment? Like, did that make me feel sad? How could I, you know, talk about it? And then, you know, there was a mindfulness course I did a while back too. And it was like how to handle certain situations with others and learning not to put yourself into it about your personal experience and turning it about you and focusing on the person you're talking with. And, but also setting boundaries for yourself and your emotional state. And it gives little suggestions, little ideas and stuff like that. But it really does sit there and it makes you think about how you handle situations. 
in being more mindful of not only yourself, but others that you're interacting with. And the only thing that like, it's great to work on yourself because that's something that you can control, but you can never control how other people are. And I think that's one of the things that stops a lot of people when it comes to spiritual growth is you get to a point where you've worked on yourself and depending on who you're around and depending their life experience and whether or not they're open or not open to certain things, you know, you can be like, look, I know that you're in an emotional state right now. Like we'll come back to this. And some people don't want to do it that way. They want to handle it right then and there. Let's get it done. I'm not doing this. F you, whatever. And it's because a lot of us in this world don't want to have those mindful moments. Don't want to have that ability to take a step back see it from a different view, calm down before initiating. It's just war. And it's because we get trained by what we see as kids, you know, with family, what we see with politicians, what we see with religion. Like most of the people right now um, that I know came from a Christian background and a lot of them deal with Christian trauma especially in the day of age where there is a lot of conversation that is happening right now about is our path going to be banned? Are they going to start witch hunts in our communities again? You know, witch hunting hasn't stopped. It's been going on. There's, you know, parts of the world that still burn people or stone people or just kill people because of their spiritual practice. And it's getting to a point here where in America, we're getting so stripped of so many rights that, you know, you have a lot of these leaders and these spiritual people on these different flat platforms who will set out there and go after people because the anger issues that they have, they're like, why would you get into something if you're not willing to fight to be continue to have that freedom? When in reality, it's unfair of them to force somebody and say, well, you're not witchy enough because you're not willing to die for your religion. A lot of people aren't willing to die for their religion. That's why there's so many different mixtures of Catholicism or different um, Christianity paths with pagan paths. You know, having that Christian magic going in with it, because even though it's dominated and trying to control it's been happening for years. This is how people survive and be able to still freely practice what they practice yeah. without being killed. And it just blows my mind that you have all these creators out there who want to go after these people. Well, I, I get it. Some of these kids that are getting into practices of paganism or spirituality or witchcraft are dabbling in things that they don't know. But it's also self-preservation that you want to be able to continue to live. And if something is getting to a point to where, you know, spiritually, you may end up getting hurt because of your spiritual practice or, you know, die because of it. And you've got kids, you've got family that you take up. You don't know people's life stories. And it's like to sit there and put such blanket statements like that. It's fucked up. You know, there's a lot going on already. There's a lot of fear going on. And then to add that to it and try to demoralize somebody on their spiritual path just because they are afraid of death because they haven't got to a certain point to where they've seen what they wanted to see and they've experienced what they wanted to experience. So even if death was a thing to come into their spiritual practice because they're being persecuted, they're ready to go. Not everybody is like that. Yeah. Like, there's so many stories of people who have dabbled into things and didn't understand it and then got scared into Christianity. And it's not because of the path. It's because they didn't learn enough. They were doing shortcuts and weren't paying attention or they were fucking with something that they weren't supposed to or they did it because they knew someone else liked it and they liked that person or they cared enough about them that they wanted to go to the adventure with them because it seemed fun because of what they seen through other social media or media in general, such as movies or whatever. And it's a, something that I've been wanting to do a video on anyway. And I will end up doing like my thought about it 
Um, I do want to get a couple other people in on it just to not have one single viewpoint on it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, get other views on it. Like, it's, it's a scary thought. I've even thought about, like, if we get to the point to where freedom of religion is only for a Christian standpoint and all these other paths, including mine, I start getting per persecuted for, you know, and with my kids still being as young as they are, you know, it's not a secret that I'm a witch, that I'm pagan. I'm literally on all these different social media platforms. Even these kids that are have fake names that never post on anything, you're still listed as pagan. Yep. You've put it out there. Like, you're not going to hide from it. And if you think you're hiding behind a name, you're not. Because there's IP addresses and everything else. Like, it's a total different world than it was back in the, like, 1500s where, like, it was secrecy meeting up. You know what I mean? Like, it's a real thing. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people won't come out of the closet. They won't come to events and... It's so disheartening for the fact that we've worked so long to try to change people's perspectives on what they think it is versus what many of us know what our path is. It's not some devil in the ground that is waiting to capture your soul. It's an experience of finding the energy life forms and discovering yourself and discovering trains of thought and feelings and emotions and d dimension jumping and actually traveling and still getting the same experiences that you need to experience on this plane of existence because you know as they always say energy cannot be destroyed it can only be transformed and we <clears throat> limit ourselves with the energy that we use towards hate and bigotry and all these other things, but it cannot change until everyone is willing to change and acknowledge and grow with it. And that can only happen when you start having those conversations. You start coming out of the dark. You start making it known. You start putting those fears to rest. That's why a lot of people have like so many bad views or some people have bad views, I should say, when it comes to religion, because it's broken families, it's started wars, it's created multiple deaths, you know what I mean? Enslavement even. And, the, and people just look at it like it's something that's horrible, which it is to an extent, but it's not that the practice is horrible. It's the man behind it or the women behind it yep. it's individualized that's what makes any spiritual path no matter what you believe individualized because you can have the path presented to you with all the facts and all the information that that religion or path contains but it's up to you to make the decision on how you use that path yep. and the viewpoints that you agree and disagree with like how, how are we you will, however you use it. Right. Basically, what I'm going to end up saying for the end of this podcast is don't let fear control your life. Don't hold back your emotions, but don't let your emotions define who you are. Be outspoken, even when it feels like your voice isn't being heard, and support each other and love each other and try to be the best you can be while you have this time on this earth. And as spiritual leaders, practitioners, or teachers, don't push your notion of what people should do when it comes to being in the closet, stopping the path because of fear, because at some point in time, your ancestors were forced to do the same. Some may have died for their religious freedom, but a lot didn't. And you have to realize that it's their individual path. And by you sitting there saying that their individual path is wrong because they're leaving it because they're scared, you don't know what's in their heart. You don't know what practices that they'll carry with them into their next journey. And that's what makes the crossroads amazing. So... With that being said, 
as always, here on the Beautiful Divine Witch. Remember, not all witches, witches say.